Good evening, weirdos. This is Mike Eshelman coming at you. And Tom Arnold. And tonight we are we have a very special guest with us. Peggy McCourt is here for episode six. So say hi to everybody, Peggy. Hello. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> So we are six episodes in now, and um, we're going to continue on where we left off last week with reaching out to people from our childhood that we sort of lost touch with. Now, um, Peggy, you and I see each other every once in a while, every funeral, I think Every funeral. Yeah. (laughs) We're we're funeral buddies. (laughs) We are. (laughs) When was the last time you saw Tom? Um, the last time I saw Tom was, uh, I, I, I met your wife. She was okay. there. Um, you were here in Columbus. Right. Was it at, was it at Jeff's? Jeff and Ginger's? Or was it at a bar? It was at a bar. It was outside. Okay. Probably <laughs> was coaches. Outside the bar. Probably coaches. Yeah, Damn, that was a it's long, been a long time. time. So, yeah, yeah, that's been time. at least ten years. Yeah, at least. Okay, yeah. if not closer to fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Where does the time go? And literally, <laughs> yes, like every funeral, uh, or not funeral per se, but like all the wakes. All the wakes, right? The wakes. Peggy and I would. There was, the there was one. You don't go for the planting. Time. You go for the open bar part. That's <laughs> precisely. Come on. <laughs> Box one. Was this person Irish? All right. I will go to the wake. <laughs> Let me clear my so, skin. The last one we went to was somebody's dad, right? Rachel. Rachel. Like last were, September. Yeah. Or two September. There was ago. one there was one before that though. There were um, a lot before that. There were a lot before that. I feel like there but that that one. Before that, it was it was a long time between mm-hmm. like Rachel's dad and the, and the last one we went to. Yeah. But it's funny every time we would go to these, we'd both like at the end of it say, "All right, this is terrible. We can't keep doing this. We need to like get back in touch and like be friends outside of this." And we'd both go, "Yeah, yeah, rah, rah!" And then we get in our cars, and then seven hundred days later, we're like, "Fuck!" Oh. <laughs> So, um, catch us up, like, in 45 seconds, what you've done for the last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I got married. I had two beautiful daughters. Uh, I'm still married. Um, are they still I, beautiful? They are still beautiful, <laughs> even more so. <laughs> I had a career in advertising and then stayed home with my girls. I started my nice. own school. And then I had to go back and get a job because now my kids want to go to college. Oh, damn it. Great. I'm, I'm working again. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you go back into the same field? Sort of, yeah. Um, so when I left, the advertising industry is much different than what it is right now. So I'm actually at a place called Relevate Health Group, and they do healthcare marketing. Okay, and yeah. um, you're in Cincinnati, correct? I am. Okay, yes. I remember that part. Okay. <laughs> I'm in Cincinnati because my husband, um, st- well, he wanted to start his own agency, got an opportunity to move down here to actually purchase another agency, and that fell through, and so now he does own his own agency. Oh, Okay. Well, yeah, that kind of worked out. It did. <laughs> right on. <laughs> it did, except I, I miss Columbus dearly. I miss my family and all my friends up in Columbus. I bet, I bet. Yeah. Um, coming it took off. me a while, but I, I, finally, I finally miss Columbus a little bit, too. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> yeah. It took you a while, though, right? Oh, yeah. It took moving to California to make me miss Columbus <laughs> a while. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> So, um, never staying home to take care of a kid and never being a woman. Um, is there any truth to um, what I've heard from other people that it's like really, really hard to get back into an industry after you've left for a couple of years to stay at home with the kids? 
Yeah, and when a couple becomes 16 years, it's even oh, harder. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, it's it's different because it's different now. Mm -hmm. Advertising, like I said, has changed um, exponentially. Uh, it's, you know, when I worked in an agency, I didn't realize how great I had it. There were politics, internal politics, all that kind of stuff. But um, we always, we were supported by a retainer, the magical word retainer. Mm -hmm. And so I always pretty much knew I was going to have a job as long as that client renewed business with us. And I was on General Mills. And so it was kind of like a, you know, a done deal. I was very lucky. And now just coming back into it, okay, are we allowed to start off just talking about millennials? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> They're protected on this show. <laughs> oh, my God, no. Just, Big half, fucking target. <laughs> so half the time at work, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they're making fun of me or if they accept me as one of their own um, and their little jokes. Like they just recently, so I just turned 50. And they found out I was 50. And there hasn't been a lot of fallout or backlash, so I'm relieved about that. But we're all working remotely. So I don't know. It's just, it's a brave new world out here. <laughs> um, yeah. It's kind of crazy. Well, especially being having, you know, sort of been absent from the industry for, for 16 years. Yeah. The, the, the last 16 years, there have been just leaps and bounds worth of changes. I mean, it, it's a completely different mindset, a completely different culture compared to what it was, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you know, so, yeah. you know, fucking good on you for, for, for jumping back, <laughs> back in because yeah, I mean, it's like learning how to walk all over again. I mean, the, the, the core concepts are the same, but now you've got to transmutate all of that, you know, what was once done sort of in, in, in within this media, mm -hmm. now you've got to nuggetize it so that it's, you know, in 140 characters or less, and it's got to be social, and there's got to be a six-second video with it. You know, it's, it's yeah. got to be appealing to all these different fucking millennials. But, yeah, it's, that's a, it's a new market, and, and they've kind of just messed everything up. Well, and, te and technology, right? Technology. Yeah. Like when I left, I was typing like ABC to get the letter C on my phone, on the guy on the flip phone, you know? You're right. And now it's like, <laughs> now we're doing video calls and like what happened in the, in the alien movie we can actually do. And so it's like, oh my right. God. <laughs> so, um, do you know what I'm talking That's about? That's your with plateau of technology. <laughs> <laughs> There's like pre-alien, alien, post-alien. Post -alien. <laughs> that's nice for me, Ash. That's it. That's, that's how I hate it. In my life. This is so before alien. Oh, my God. This is so, yeah. <laughs> A pager. Oh, my God. That's pre-alien. <laughs> Should I fax that to you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ridley. <laughs> Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you know, PowerPoint and Excel and all those wonderful things. Um, I used a little bit of Excel for like home finances, but when I was in advertising, we didn't use that stuff. It was all email and just, you know, as long as I kept the clients happy and I was friendly, I was pretty much doing my job. Right. Bar napkins. So, yeah. Bar napkins. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Really? <laughs> I was just used to get done. <laughs> at my uh, current job, <clears throat> for a while, I was managing the contracts for all the, the marketing campaigns that we have for like the lottery and um, the 529 plans for um, college funds. And, and, and again, I, I would read these and I'm like, I have no idea what any of this shit is. I mean, the, the charts look amazing, but it was like a completely different language. So mm -hmm. I, I had to just rely on the people actually buying the product. I'm like, I don't know what all of these words mean, but I'm, I'm hoping you can show me who the best match is. It was like, it was like reading Sanskrit almost, some of the stuff that they were coming up with. <laughs> now you're talking Indiana Jones. So is that your, is that your threshold for technology? Yes, yes 1945. <laughs> <laughs> That's it exactly. <laughs> no, I don't um shit, uh war games, I guess would be oh, my yeah. oh. 
games. So. Oh, I loved war games. I loved that movie. <laughs> Shall we <laughs> play <movie>. a game? <laughs> oh my gosh. And you know, for the longest time, that music that they play when he's like trying to figure stuff out, you know, and he's like, when I would go to the library to research something, that music would play in my head. I freaking <laughs> love that movie. Oh my God, the greatest movie. Hmm. But that's usually like my, um, that's my, my spot <laughs> in technology is like, is this yeah. pre-war games or post-war games? Like, oh, okay. if it's pre, I, that, yeah. I can figure it out. If it's post, uh, I may have to look it up. Mm-hmm. Huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get that. Okay. Never. So can I, can I ask, can I just tell you something that has struck me as I've been listening to your podcast? Well, now you can. But okay. Yeah. So- now it's uh let's see the first one was it the first one yeah the first one where you're talking about bump's corner i learned a new piece of trivia i did not know that it was named bump's corner before you guys got there or bums sorry i didn't know bums was on the door before you guys got there i thought you named it so good you know, on that. You know that's that is like the mystery of the ages is who put that duct the, the that electrical tape up there. Yeah, it's a chicken egg kind of thing, you know. Did <laughs> did somebody like hanging out there from Waterson put the tape up there? Or was it already there when we got there and we just started calling yeah. it that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. That's that's an interesting point. I never thought of it. Well, I don't never. think about a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so what i love about oh tom God. is his depth <laughs> this is so awesome it's like it's like you guys like we haven't changed at all like we're just it's, it's sad know. isn't it mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay so as i was preparing for this podcast i also had another funny memory Remember when in drama um, you guys used to play that fainting game <laughs> where you would like oh, you make each other pass out? Yes. What? Yeah. Just remember? You do the Jeff Eggle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, basically what you had to do, Mike, was you had to like lean over, like bend over and take ten deep breaths. Okay, and then back up Tom... your back was against the wall. Yeah, your back you had to put your head down. Oh, and somebody pushes you or something? Yeah, yeah. pushes As you, you st- stood up real fast, and then yeah, you got the, the hands yeah. on the chest and you would faint. And oh. Tom or George did it to uh, Jeff Egelhoff, and I'm like, Oh my god, you killed Jeff Egelhoff. <laughs> <laughs> I was so freaked out. I would not do it. There was no way in hell I was going to let go of that much of control of my body. Yeah. But anyway, it's just a random memory that came to me I wanted to share with you. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> holy shit. Well, <laughs> that, that was a ridiculous trend. Yeah. And see, what's funny, like over and over again, we talk about how stupid kids are these days. And, <laughs> yeah. And, the point that we come kept coming up with is we were too. It's just nobody fucking filmed it, you know. Right. Yes. <laughs> God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I never played the pass out game, but what was that stuff that we did? Uh, Rush. Do you remember that? You might not. Oh have God. Been yeah. Like I don't the, know. Tell me. It was. Um. I don't even know what the chemical is, but you put it in water it? beds and stuff. <laughs> and it, it was basically like really thin rubber cement and you just sort of like yeah. breathed it in <laughs> and you, okay. you'd get a contact high off of it mm-hmm. ah, water beds and stuff you know my mom never let me go to that store <laughs> 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 but it was like as I grew up it was the mecca for all things fascinating and interesting and yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you could buy Dinner. incense, um, right. amphetamines there. No Skull way. Sh- no yeah, the white crosses you could buy speed there. Yeah, that's and right. like um, <laughs> in whatever Columbus Alive, maybe at the time, the back page had a buy one get one free uh, <laughs> coupon for like two hundred count bottles of um, ephedrine. <laughs> So remember, we used to keep them at the restaurant. Like we'd come in. Now, oh God, yeah. Like if, now, granted, this is like ten in the morning. Okay, just dragging ass. Like oh my God, I'm so tired. <laughs> and so we had this like vat size jar of ephedrine, 
And I'm like, well, I got one free. I might as well get, help my friends out. So we just you know, pop a couple with your coffee. Yep. <laughs> Doing a line off the counter. <sighs> hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, let's, right? Let's sling some rice. <laughs> yep. I'm ready. <laughs> So it was at that particular Mexican restaurant, right, that I'm thinking of? That's where you guys are talking about? It started out as a Zantigo, but it was a oh, Chinese okay. restaurant when we worked there. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know if we're allowed to mention restaurant names because I don't want to get you guys sued or have Fuck to pay the, the eight people that listen to this aren't going to sue us. <laughs> um, Chi-Chi's. I thought you both worked at Chi-Chi's. No. No. Oh, where'd you work then? Uh, we were both at four, five, six together. Yeah. Four, five, six. Oh my god! That's right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Oh wow! I, I don't know anybody that actually worked at Chi Chi's. I mean, we we sat no. in there a lot. I can't yeah, say we would bought a lot. They didn't card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, we'd go, <laughs> and there was free nachos. <laughs> Um, did Pizza Hut card? Did Pizza Hut serve alcohol? Yeah, they did. They did, did, they? They, they did but they did card. Little... The thing is, we screwed up with Pizza Hut because we got in good with the management. We knew Bob and, uh, wait, what, not as Bob, what was his name? The <laughs> guy. Well, I don't know why I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the manager at the Pizza Hut there, Yeah. we were pals with because we'd stay there all day damn night and we'd help him close and Wendy the waitress would we'd help her shut down the restaurant (laughs) these are things I remember huh I didn't know they they served alcohol there Mm -hmm. I'll be damned there you go (laughs) yeah because eventually I think he started giving us pictures (laughs) I think we wore him down (laughs) (laughs) now did everybody like have their letter jacket on with the yeah. year right on the shoulder, so oh, it was dead you obvious that you're underage. <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, God. Yeah, youth. Damn. <laughs> Good it's, time. It, it, okay. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. It was all right. It sure beat its adult. It was all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are not having good adulthoods? Come on now. That's true. No, I'm having a great time. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it kind of rocks. It's uh, Yeah, I dig it. It is kind of right? badass. I mean, you can do whatever you want and afford to do it, too. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yep. No, but it's I, all right. I am a little little disappointed at myself for, for not taking advantage of the ice cream for dinner as often as I... As I think my ten-year-old self planned on doing, oh, a few unkept promises. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm gonna have ice cream for dinner every night. Yeah, I'll show so you. It, it just never seems like a good idea. I you know. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> See what, what you need to do is. Um, I like started paying the the monthly service fee to DoorDash because my logic was I, I save every time on the all the extra fees that they add on to it. But then I'm in this circle where well, if I don't order DoorDash twice this week, technically I'm not saving money. So if I do <laughs> lunch and dinner from some random restaurant today. So basically, if I spend eighty dollars, I'll save the ten that I've already spent, and it, it, the logic works out. So yes, there are like mm. where I eat like uh, a raccoon on some days. <laughs> <laughs> this pandemic has been the fucking best. <laughs> yeah, what they don't tell you is that like, yeah, sure, you can go to bed whenever you want. Mm-hmm. But you got to get up the next day and work. <laughs> you pay <Yep>. for it. <laughs> yeah, you pay for it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Crazy town. So, Tom, you are also working? Right? I am. Like a full-time gig? Yeah. Yeah. Is it good? What? What? How's your life? It's awesome. Yeah? Uh, dude, I married a chef. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <so> wow. <laughs> I didn't know so, she was a chef. 
Ash is talking about DoorDash, and I'm like, what is that now? <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's cool. She actually just quit her job. Um, okay. So she's working for me now. What? Again. What? Interesting. <laughs> well, no, no. She's not actually working for me. She's back to being a, a housewife. A chef. A chef. Oh, so she brings you food upstairs. She's a floor dash. She's a floor dash. There it is. That's a good one. Eggs, please. (laughs) Stomp, stomp, stomp. So what industry are you in for your full-time job? I'm in radio, but I'm still working for the government. Ah, all right then. After I got got out of the Army, I got a civilian gig. Sweet. So, yeah. Still doing that. How many years years are you out of the army? Oh Lord, uh, fifteen. Okay, a little over fifteen years. Wow, I've been Thank out. Thank you for your service. Hey, no problem. It was an honor and a, and a joy. Yeah, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Almost every day. <laughs> mm. No, it was great. Uh, I loved. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the RB. All the craziness and everything that came with it was was at least in my experience was was incredibly worth it. Um, and yeah, I don't. I have, I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever for uh, for for joining the army and, and and spending the time I did in active service. So yeah, it worked out fantastically for me. All the marketing and the commercials were correct in my in my in, in regards to my experience. Yes. That's good. It worked out worked out really well. Cool. Yeah. Good. And it set me up for a great career, so no yeah. complaints. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Um, Did you do any DJing in the Army? Yeah, actually, I worked for the American Forces Network. Um, nice. And so, yeah, in, uh, when we were in Germany, uh, I had a morning show. I had an afternoon show uh, in Heidelberg. And then uh, when we were in Stuttgart, I had sort of a, a once a week we would do a live show remote from from Stuttgart and then I got a job as a civilian working for uh, American Forces Network Europe headquarters mm-hmm. and ended up eventually back in radio for the network and so I had a basically theater wide continent wide uh morning show that I did that was in in English or in German English yeah okay. it's all yeah, yeah American Forces Network it's all uh, in English for uh, the U.S. troops and uh, the, like the State Department and DOD assets that are stationed overseas, so that they can get news information and uh, entertainment in English. And so we cool. have welcomes. Yeah, and that's why I still work for cool. AFN now. So, can you give me a Good Morning Heidelberg? Uh, good, good morning, morning, morning Heidelberg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now listen, listen. I was we hoping don't... for more of like a Good Morning Vietnam vibe. Yeah. Okay, so do it again. No. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I'm going to do it if you don't do it. Do it. Good morning, Heidelberg. That sounds that, Yeah. I'm awake. I can't compete. I'm awake. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Good morning, Heidelberg. Let's hit the castle. Yeah. You negated all my pre-show <laughs> drinking. <laughs> I feel oh, alert I'm now. I'm terribly sorry. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Please do keep drinking. That's okay. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so since you listen to the shows to uh, yes. prepare yourself for the show. Yes. You know, she did her homework. <laughs> you I know did. That, that part of it is um, plucking articles from the AP Newswire and, and shitting on people's <clears throat> life choices. Can't um, wait. I'm here for it. Do you want to stick around and do that with us? Is that okay? Yes. God, yes. Okay, Absolutely. fantastic. Yes, I would love okay. to. Okay. Well, okay. um... Where are we time-wise? Yeah. How about we stick in an ad right here, and then when we come back, we'll go over the fine assortment of articles that Tom picked out for us. (laughs) Sounds good. Okay. So here we go, and uh, we'll be right back. Well, that was boring as hell. Um, Yay! (laughs) And uh, since, again, I'll I'll backtrack to Tom making fun of the fact that we could barely make a phone call in March with the (laughs) revenue that we had gained from this show, we are now up to four phone calls. (laughs) Woohoo! Congratulations! No. Wow. Yeah. Not a lot of people listen to us. 
like in like three or four hundred years, this show's gonna pay for itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still way in the hole. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Tom, there were a couple articles with a common theme here. And yeah. Then, a couple wild cards that you threw in for us. So, do you want to like lead off with the two themed ones, and then I'll pick up the wild cards, or vice versa? Um, yeah. What the themes? <laughs> uh oh, I shrunk my screen. Damn it. Okay. Why don't okay. you start us off then? The first one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Naked man crashes stolen van into fire hydrant, then showers in the geyser. <laughs> I can't look at I can't look at Peggy while I'm reading. Yeah, why would you drink when he's getting ready to read the title? <laughs> Did you just, just spit all over your closet? Back. No, I'm good. I'm okay. good. The hazards of video chat. <laughs> okay, let me let me hit that again. Naked man crashes stolen van into fire hydrant, then showers in the geyser. A British Columbia woman couldn't believe her eyes when she saw a naked man hop onto a strange minivan, strike a fire hydrant, then proceed to bathe in the gushing water. Quote, a naked man took someone else's vehicle, drove like crazy up the hill, hit the hydrant, comes out of the vehicle, goes down the road, goes back, takes a bath in the fire hydrant. Stark naked, says Diane Clark as she told Global News. I heard the squealing of tires and smack. There he went up the hill, Clark recalled. After spotting an abandoned gray minivan in a ditch, Royal Canadian Mounted Police found the driver, who was taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say they are investigating if the suspect was impaired and whether to charge him with dangerous driving. <laughs> well, let's deliberate over that for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Stone cold sober. <laughs> you think the, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> say what you will about the, the lightning fast legal system here in the, in the lower 48, but... Uh, <laughs> Get off your horse and do some thinking about that one. <laughs> Gee, I think oh. something was wrong with that guy. I don't know. Eh? I, 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 I could not understand the the thinking. Like, where in the process of all of this did he get naked? Did he like <laughs> leave his house naked that morning? Right. Was he at a bar and thought, man, it's hot in here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, where where does naked begin in that's this entire thing. rampage? That's the thing, yeah, because it doesn't really say. I mean, she says the naked man was there. Right. He was there. He was just there. Pre stolen car. So many unanswered. Was he questions. naked before or after? Stealing the car. Do you like, oh, look, a gray minivan. Hang on. Let me drop trow and <laughs> I'm stealing this car. I'm stealing this thing. <laughs> or was it, well, I, I've, I've hit this fire hydrant in a, in a stolen vehicle. I may as well bathe. See, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, thinking it was, yeah. I don't know. Or I, I thought also maybe it's not beer, but like he's having an acid trip and, you know, I'm, I almost said, you know, when you get to that point, but you know when you've seen movies about people doing acid <laughs> and, and, like, your clothes are covered in bugs? And, and so maybe he stripped all his clothes off and then started this gigantic Rube Goldberg machine process of getting a shower. Like, oh, yeah. there's water in that yellow hump, but how do I get it out? Like, oh, gray minivan. There you go. Here we, I click, think click, you're click. a thousand percent right. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and he gets into the van, and yeah, and I everybody's don't know. happy except the lady, obviously, that owns the gray minivan. Yeah, because it's but that was for covered. It was, it's probably insured. They have to have insurance. You so. really think this guy carries insurance? No, I think the I think the owner of the minivan <laughs> actually has insurance. <laughs> Because <laughs> dip well, into a motorist. <laughs> I mean, he didn't have his card on him. That's for God. Well, maybe he did. I don't know. 
you know, maybe he was walking We're... funny up to the waddle, waddle, waddle. I have my yeah. wallet shoved up my ass, but I really need a shower right now, walk. <laughs> you yeah, prison. because... Carry his prison gonna, wallet. Yeah, if you're going to, like, crash into a fire hydrant, that's the first thing you're going to think of. Oh, I'm naked. i got to grab my wallet and shove it up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first thing is, yeah. I have got to get these bugs off my skin. <laughs> <laughs> Before I turn into lava. <laughs> From what I hear. <laughs> because uh. the color blue is yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I heard that from a friend. Fine, Tom. This is mm, chef's <sighs> kiss. <laughs> it had my two favorite words in the <laughs> title. <laughs> Geyser uh. and naked... <laughs> That's none of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, from naked Canadians to drunk monkeys. <clears throat> drunk monkey bites over 250 people sentenced to life behind bars. If you thought 2020 was a strange year, buckle up. Because a monkey has... <laughs> Because a monkey has been sentenced to life behind bars. No, really, this isn't fake news. Gulf News reports that a pet monkey named Kalua went on a rampage in the Indian city of Mirzapur after his owner died. And before you think the monkey was sad, just know the rampage wasn't fueled by grief. It was because Kalua was having alcohol withdrawals. <laughs> As it turns out, his old owner, an occultist if you must know, allowed him to get boozed up whenever he wanted. So much so, in fact, Kalua, who now has a super appropriate name if you think about it, became addicted to alcohol. So when the monkey's owner dropped dead, Kalua went into withdrawal, became aggressive, and started attacking people. After biting 250 people, which resulted in one death, monkey trappers were called in to deal with the rampaging alcoholic. Eventually, the primate was caught and shipped off to the Kampur Zoo, where the staff there had high hopes that Kalua would be released into the wild after successfully completing a stint in rehab. Well, fast forward three years, and the zoo has a not-so-great update on Kalua. We kept him in isolation for some months and then shifted him to a separate cage, said Zoo Doctor Maud Nasir. There has been no change in his behavior and he remains as aggressive as he was. It has been three years since he was brought here, but now it has been decided that he will remain in captivity all his life. Nasir fully believes that if they did release Kalua, he'd go back on a tear and injure even more people. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a lot to take in. You know, it's, yeah, it ended on a really kind of sad note there. Yeah, well, okay. Now think about this though. Um, it's probably good that little Kalua was not in the United States because he would not have been given a trial. He would not have gone to monkey jail. You know, here you call the police and say, you know, the neighbors Rottweiler kind of looked at my kid funny. And they bring three snipers in a helicopter to fucking murder yeah. your dog. But here, True. he bit, he murdered one person and bit 249 <laughs> other people. And their response... No, wait, did he, well, maybe, did he murder it? Well, he killed one and bit, he bit a total 250 and one died. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they thought, well, maybe if we, like, talk to him, you know, have him attend some meetings... Get a couple coins. Maybe we can turn this little monkey around. Teach him the 12 steps. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, good for them to, like, just keep him alive this entire time. He's an angry little monkey. That's an angry monkey. That's an angry fucking monkey right there. Three years of being dry, and he's still pissed off. Possessed monkey. I yeah. think the, the owner died and, like, and then turned evil and then went into the monkey. Ooh. Oh. Occultist. That's right. He was an occultist. He, he could have done that. He could have done like the Chucky thing. 
And my Instead daughter of, has me watching a lot of Supernatural, so I think that that's yeah. probably what happened. Oh, so, so a shotgun the, like, shell of salt would take this monkey out? Is that the... Yes! Yeah. Maybe. You gotta burn the bones of the occultist where he's been. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you do. Wasn't that the you plot do. of Monkey Shines? Remember the guy in the wheelchair? Had the, the little campuchia monkey? Maybe. That I didn't see Monkey Shines. Okay. Mm-mm. It's an older movie. You should check it out. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, it's a guy in Did a wheelchair. Did you say cappuccino monkey? You mean capuchin? That's exactly what I said. <laughs> and I wish there was a rewind so we could prove it. <laughs> cappuccino monkey. Fucking I like cappuccino better. I'm just saying. Whose idea was it to have you on here? <laughs> Tom's. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Do you guys think, how do you think the monkey was able to bite 249 other people? Well, they're quick. <laughs> That's what I don't you. get. Okay, so, I mean, from the article, the prepositional phrase, after biting over 250 people, which resulted in one death, death monkey trappers were called. After 250 people were bitten. So, like, you're watching the news in the morning, and you're like, this single monkey has bitten 220 people in your neighborhood. You're like, huh, I gotta remember to pick up the dry cleaning today. No big deal. That's a 30 more bites, and that's a problem. Yeah, fuck that monkey. Call somebody. We are calling the monkey trappers. I, you know, how fantastic that, that they live in a world where there's actually a monkey trapper is, is a career path. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I would do that. Oh, I'd yeah. pack it all in tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Fuck it, I'm going to go be a monkey trapper. You'd be so good at it. I'm moving to Mirzapur. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to kill them either. I mean, it, it's, no. it's catch and take the trial. <laughs> You know, the, yeah. they have the the little van with the cage door in the back, like the <laughs> dog catchers in cartoons. You walk around with your little net. Here, yep. Kalua, 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 Kalua. <laughs> Aren't exactly. I a meaty catch? Come bite me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you guys find the best shit. With, why do monkey owners always get their monkeys drunk? I don't get that. I don't know, I mean, but I can't say I can't definitively say that I wouldn't. I don't get it. I mean, humans it's given the opportunity. Humans turn into assholes when they're drunk. You're taking yeah. a small animal that's faster than you that has fangs and claws. It's like, hey man, I want you to be a raging asshole tonight. Yeah, you know, kill me in my sleep. Let's talk about politics and religion and sports. And do shots, you little shot. fuzzy murder ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little hairy, ra- raging, you know, razor sharp rage machine. <laughs> they probably put a jaunty little cap on him, and Kalua's like, you know what? Fuck it. This is it. I'm sick of your bullshit. I'm sick of your jaunty hats. I'm killing I didn't, I didn't mind the vest, but fuck the hat. <laughs> I draw the line at the kicky beret. <laughs> You're dead, and 250 of your best friends are dead. Right, and they all had to go get rabies treatment. So, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know this was a trend. I didn't know people on the regular got their monkeys drunk. I mean, if I mean, if you base it on movies, but every movie I see <laughs> with somebody has a pet monkey, they're always giving them liquor. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? That's crazy. But I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's got something to hide except for me and my monkey. Coo-coo-ca-choo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Tom, take us to Bangkok. Can do. <laughs> yeah. Naked man scares woman off her motorcycle promptly steals it. If a naked man sitting at an intersection 
stood to his feet and walked slowly towards you as you idled at a red light. What would you do? One woman sacrificed her motorcycle motorcycle to keep the creep away from her. The Bangkok Post reports that the incident happened in southern Thailand on Sunday, and it all started thanks to some good Samaritans. Basically, a group of dudes saw a poor naked man snoozing on the side of the road and decided it was a good idea to load him into their van and drive him to the hospital. Well, the man woke up and decided to raise a little hell. His rampage ended when he launched himself from the moving vehicle and plunked himself right down on the road divider, chilling at the intersection he was left at. Cue a woman out for a joyride on her motorcycle and was the unfortunate soul to get caught by the red light. When she noticed the strange naked guy walking toward her, she did the only logical thing and scrambled off her bike and ran away. Well, that resulted in the naked man taking ownership of the abandoned bike, climbed onto it, and drove off despite the best efforts from a rescue worker who tried to keep him from stealing it. The entire debacle was caught on camera, which lasted about 50 seconds. While it's unknown what happened to the motorcycle, or if the woman would ever even take it back after a dirty naked man rubbed his <laughs> junk all over the seat, <laughs> the perp was eventually arrested at a nearby market on Tuesday, three days later, and yeah, he was still naked. <laughs> Oh, one night in Bangkok. <laughs> Bangkok, Oriental City. City don't know how the city is kept. Crept to the crowd of the chess bar than... with a show with everything but your brother. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, there's so much blame to go around here. And <laughs> <coughs> starting off with the dudes that put him in a van. All right. Yeah. All right. It, no matter how dirty your van is, if you see a naked man on the side of the road, unless you are in the midst of building a skin suit, you leave mm-hmm. the fucker there. You bring yeah. the hospital to him. You call 911 and say, there's a guy here with the wrong tone of skin for the suit that we're making. Can you please come and pick him up? You don't just pile him in and say, oh, God, I hope he doesn't wake up before we get to the hospital. Ahoy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I got that's That's pretty spot on, man. Uh, <laughs> except for the whole skin suit thing. <laughs> just as an example. You, know, you, got, you can tan and dye any skin color. <laughs> man, it's exactly what you need. Jeez. <laughs> You don't let that shit go to waste. <laughs> Could you give me a hand? <laughs> oh. oh, God. But then the girl on the motorcycle. I mean, you're, you're literally on a vehicle that can outrun this guy. Yeah. Easily. Why not run the light? Bingo. I mean, was it, really, was it an insanely busy intersection? Uh, you, I don't know. Could you just do a little loop and, and maybe... Turn around. That's what I was thinking. Like three <laughs> quick away. little rights, and then you're a block away from said naked man. Yeah. But, yeah, but we weren't there. Like, what if he was a zombie? That could. What be if true. he had like zombie looking, lookingness hmm. to him? You know, like not a real zombie, but like, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's, he's coming at her like a naked dance, like wiggling uh, all around, and she's like. Brain. Maybe me. he was like, yeah, doing like the hustle or something at her. Well, the backup he was coming at her like, like a disco thriller, like a monkey, like, like a killer a, monkey. Right? They, obviously, they there's a higher. Uh, they need some monkey trappers in, in Bangkok. Maybe I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> they need somebody to train them there. There, you, you could be the the monkey trapper trainer. Monkey trapper. <laughs> You write that one down? Yep. Uh, so, yeah. Good on the guys. Like, oh, we'll take this guy to the hospital. But, yeah, I think, uh, you know, like, you know, raising my kid, I'm like, don't pick that up. <laughs> leave, leave a track on the, don't. 
you know, I, I you know, I appreciated, you know, my son would would find trash on the ground and be like, oh, it's the nice thing to do would be to pick that up and, and take it to the trash can. Well, there isn't one around. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like, look, if you if you pick it up and there isn't like a trash can in the immediate, like within your, you know, within eyesight, if you're not an eyesight of a trash can, just leave that shit in the ground. <laughs> It's, it sucks, but that's fair. Because now you got to carry it. Now, now you own it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so these yahoos took ownership of this making drunk, <laughs> oh, and God knows what what he did into their van. I mean, you really, you really just gotta just hate your van to load that into it. <laughs> And yes, I would be pissed if I were the woman if the cops called and said, "Hey, we recovered your motorcycle." Like, ah, yeah, sorry, wrong number. I kind of reported that stolen, so yeah, I already got the check. Of yeah, the insurance. we're, we're I good. Want to, to scrub the seat and get the little starfish stain off of it. So why don't you guys keep it and we'll pretend we never had this conversation, right? <laughs> Oh God! Yeah. Starfish stain. Sure. <laughs> really good. He's straddling. I mean, there's a pretty good chance he he left a little starfish print on it. Uh, yeah, you gotta get a little. Uh... <laughs> oh my gosh! A little kiss from the brown eye. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, and plus the fact that they found him on Tuesday. So he yeah, stole that I love. the motorcycle on Sunday. Where the fuck was this guy all day Monday that he didn't have to get dressed at all? You know, <laughs> when was you this? Know, a li- it, this is in May. I mean, do homeless people have stay-at-home orders too? If you don't have a home, where the fuck was he? How do you enforce that? <laughs> I don't know. Back under your bridge. <laughs> Get back there. <laughs> Pick up with a broom handle or something? That's right. Or a chair and a whip, like, a, like, a, like an old-timey... Lion tamer? Flaming lion tamer? Ringling brothers? <laughs> back back under the bridge with you. Get out of your tip city. <laughs> but, I mean, he went 24 solid hours butt-naked with a motorcycle. I'm a little jealous, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. It just so many holes in the story, man. This this AP Newswire just leaves me with so many questions every week. Yeah. When do we do this? Well, that, month, I guess. The podcast is is nothing if not thought provoking. That's that's the goal. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. We're doing Absolutely. a public service for sure. <laughs> Somebody's googling yeah. starfish right now and is. <laughs> It is going to be painfully upset when they get to the okay, image so, search. Speaking up, I have a follow up. May I do a follow up? Absolutely. Okay. Um, did we ever find anybody from our class that is homeless? Oh. Oh. No, we haven't started. Oh, okay. Yet. You know, oh, okay. Why? Well, yeah. Do you have a lead? <laughs> I don't. I don't. Oh, I. But that was super fascinating to me because I was like, oh yeah, they're right. I bet you know. Like, Let's say out of. Out of Watterson, maybe not our specific yeah. class of 286, mm. but, you know, out of Watterson. I, it was just very interesting to me, and I wondered if you yeah. actually had done any research on that. I'll add that to my list. Okay. Do. Say, I, get back to us on that. <laughs> okay. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. I owe Peggy a do. I, I got that on my list of do outs. When you that. pointed out that nothing had changed, you were absolutely right. <laughs> because the second <laughs> we said that, bam, it left our heads, yeah. and we never <laughs> looked back. <laughs> like okay, the following you know, month I was putting all the wires and shit together I'm like wasn't there something I was supposed to do before we recorded another one of these didn't I have homework eh, we'll figure it out I would love to bo- to volunteer to be your homework lackey just FYI a, a researcher sure yeah on wild and weird questions you come up with on this podcast all right well okay why don't you hunt down some homeless Catholics then I'm going to work on that uh, one okay. first. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how I do on my first assignment. All right. Okay. This is like right. a test drive. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yep. And if they live closer to Tom, or let's say west of the Mississippi, 
they, okay. they can record from Tom's house. That's a little broad. <laughs> <laughs> many, many miles. <laughs> How are they going to get here? I was thinking about... <laughs> By population. I, mean, <laughs> I I don't know that we'll actually record them. We might just find out that they are. Mm. Yeah. And that might have to be enough. Okay. Well, we can go okay. mobile. We'll road trip. We'll come to oh, that. Fantastic. We will rent a van and pile them in there. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and then drop acid and go to Denny's. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So let us know what you find out. I will. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna research it. Okay. Okay. I would be curious about that though. I was. <laughs> I was then and forgot about it. I should really listen to this show. It sounds pretty interesting. It, you know, it's, on the surface, it's a really it really kind of does. I'll have to check it out sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, when you're editing it and trying to get, like, the volume that you guys are making and the volume that I'm making the same, and then yeah. put the AVs on the back and front of it, mm-hmm. by then I have listened to it enough that I hate it. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting this get online it. and never looking back. So, but I will check it out on your recommendation. I will, I will actually listen. <laughs> <laughs> I trust Peggy's judgment. I bet it's pretty all right. I bet it's all right. Hey, according to three people on Apple Podcasts, we are five star <gasps> quality. Uh, yeah, but that's fantastic, are... dude. Where can I rate your podcast? <laughs> In the Apple Podcast app, if that's what you use. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah, I do. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Right on. Anyone listening? Why don't you head on over there and. Uh, Rate this podcast five stars. Shit, I never thought go. of Free that. Plug. We should tell them while we're recording to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> hey, you know, if this homeless thing works out, Peggy, maybe you could just manage the show for us. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming okay, up with all kinds of brilliant to talk. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'll show you the budget real quick. Oh, I mean, continue to talk about yeah, the budget. Yeah, it's like this. Like, it's, it's, we have enough for a phone call. Take so that finger and hand? bend it five times. Of my pinky finger, bend it there five you go. times? Okay, yeah. all right. That's it. Okay, got add, add it. Three, add three knuckles to this. <laughs> three knuckles, okay. Get it. That's got it, exactly. It. it would be a labor of love. I would not expect to be eight. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't know what he, what he, he wants to do with that. <laughs> be nice to us. What? Yeah. Oh. What do you want? <laughs> I only have one good kidney, and good is a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tansky's retired. I'm going to pull him in on this. Yeah, there you go. Right. He needs a job. Yeah. He needs a job. <laughs> he needs to be gainfully and active. <laughs> Keep his mind working. Yeah, yeah there I'll have you him go. check for the homeless in Colorado while he's still there. Oh, actually, Colorado would <clears> be <throat> yeah. an awesome place to be homeless too, wouldn't it? Totally. Well, except for like fall and winter. Oh, there is that. Okay. Yeah, but in, in the summer, there's no humidity. Yeah, that's what I was. Thinking. <laughs> you could be migratory. <laughs> You know, summer in Arizona or winter in Arizona, and then walk back to Colorado in the summer. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Okay, so okay. <clears throat> this one was just plain gross, and I feel kind of bad that I'm stuck with it, but I'm just going to power through this. Okay. This one made me laugh till I cried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woman discovers bar of soap she used for four days was actually cheese. Uh, A Vancouver, Washington woman reportedly spent four days protecting herself from COVID-19 by diligently washing her hands with what she thought was a bar of soap, only to realize it was a piece of cheese. According to the Irish Post... 
the woman, identified as Miley, supposedly made the stunning admission on Reddit, where she explained a lump of cheddar was left out of the refrigerator overnight following a drunken late night snack. What? She tried to justify the confusion by saying that she usually keeps a bar of yellow unscented soap handy nope. for hand cleansing. After a couple of days of thinking, why isn't this foaming? Miley says she eventually realized it was a dried out square of Tillamook sharp cheddar cheese. I suspect I left it out when I was intoxicated and just forgot, she adds. That is so fucking gross. Okay, what country again? Vancouver, Washington. Okay. USA. What interesting that it's like Vancouver, Washington, as reported in the Irish Post. It's fresh and clean as a whistle, baby. <laughs> oh God. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, so like for my research, I Googled Shea Butter Unscented Soap. And it does kinda kind of look like cheese. No, I'm no. Googling it right now. No. no. Kind of. <clears throat> I mean, if, if it's no. three in the morning and you're drunk, kind of. So, so I will give her the benefit of the doubt and say this could maybe happen once. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, I'll give it to her once. You do it once. But not four days during a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on, my general overall attention is, uh, you know, f- f- hyper focused on cleanliness. <laughs> mm-hmm. hmm, why isn't this vote? Maybe tomorrow it'll vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you know Neutrogena soap, right? Those Neutrogena yeah. bar soaps is kind of that clear orangey color. Yeah, right. They have like the amber. The amber, yeah, clear yeah. orange. Still, no, just no. All right, this woman crazy yeah and okay so and and again um tom you're a monster for putting this in because again i I, I, like i started breaking it all down and the part that that truly bothers me is okay so she has a habit of keeping yellow unscented soap next to her sink Mm -hmm. she accidentally washed her hands with cheese Cheese. Where's the soap? Did she right. eat was this... the soap when she was drunk oh. and leave oh. the cheese? Where'd it go? Ew. She ate it. Oh, oh yeah. That is mm. not good for the bowels. What? <laughs> Clean you up. <laughs> Allegedly. I... Yeah. You should run for president, Tom. <laughs> 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 what is the who has the byline on this story in the Irish Post? That's a good question. Let, Peg, you're and, asking way too many questions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, the, we, have, we don't have answers. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't pull too hard on the thread. <laughs> the sweater is all just held together, really kind of by by wishes and dreams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my other issue, good. besides the fact that she ate a bar of soap, <laughs> how bad do you have to fucking smell that you don't notice that your hands smell like cheese for four straight days? Yeah. You know, I mean, if I eat Cheetos at some point in the day, that bothers me until I can get in like that. You know, Silkwood shower and just scrub the shit out of it and get rid of it all. And she went four days with that. Like, man, this room is kind of cheddary. Ah, la, 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 la. Why does my why does it, why does my ass keep smelling cheese? Yeah. Why does this pillow smell like cheese? Ah. And every time her hands get warm, it smells like it more, you know? Like a, You'd think. Yeah. Ah, and obviously she has no pets. Oh yeah, they'd be licking the hell out of her. She'd be, she'd wake up handless. (laughs) 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 
Uh, okay. <laughs> so, well, then our hand soap problem would be completely just a non-issue anymore. That's true. Yep. You have to get yellow unscented stump soap after that. <laughs> See, I think they use like a like a like a balm. <laughs> Is it like uh, the lava that you keep in your garage? You know, it's like the little yeah. tub. You just gotta rub it in. It's there. like a powder. Yeah, well, it's a powder. <laughs> It is different. It exfoliates. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for some Tillamook cheese and some stump wash. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> um, we're ending on a high So day. she's an idiot. You know... Last week was so depressing. God, Tansky was all, and I love Rick to death, but his job is just doom and gloom. You know, anybody with education, God damn. Human resources for a school district. Yeah. Wow. So, like, I could say, I have 10 different mugs here with happy, enthusiastic sayings. And he's like, I will shit in every one of those. <laughs> But this is upbeat and happy. <laughs> we had drunk, naked people just enjoying life and being Great. fresh and clean oh. as a whistle. God bless them. Washing themselves with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Tillamook, though. That That is some good stuff. That's all right. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to bathe with any soap I'd go, or any cheese, I'd go with that one. That's a good option. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and shredded or or would you go with the with the with the bar? I'm a bar guy personally. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I go with the Vermont cheddar, like the white, oh, the white Vermont yeah. cheddar. Fancy, a little milder. Yeah, a little gentler on the skin. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't flake as easy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the day of the week. If it's Tuesday, I'm going Mexican bread. <laughs> you know, so I can, like, camouflage for Taco Tuesday. So you can smell like Taco yeah. Tuesday. You can just Like, just anticipate it. it all morning. Like, put your nose in your shirt. Like, <sighs> we're almost there. Yeah. Oh God! Well, Peggy, this has been an absolute joy. And True. I'm so glad I've had such a blast. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> of on. course. Did you seriously? Did you think you'd end up with homework? I was kind of hoping. <laughs> right on, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> the second you wrote that down, you have put more effort into the show than both of us combined. <laughs> That is a lie. That is a straight out lie. Well, I don't know about you, Eshelman, but Tom is busting his ass, like finding these articles and looking up Great. this fun stuff. These drug Ash, monkey don't stories do. don't just fall out of the sky. You know? <laughs> yes, you're the self proclaimed editor. I mean, that shit takes time. I'm super proud of you guys for doing this. I think it's awesome. Thanks, man. I think it's just fantastic. Thanks. And you're welcome back right anytime you want. You, you've been an absolute yep. pleasure okay. to have on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you guys do you guys know that my um my little nickname that I earned at the gym is hashtag positive peg. Positive peg. Positive Isn't that nice? Peg. That's fitting. You've yeah. always been a positive pig. Yeah. Aw, thanks. It's true. Yeah. Are there a lot of yeah. um, uses of that hashtag? I have it on my resume. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it helped get me this job. Holy shit. Okay, because quick, you're a hashtag. Quick story. So the values at my company are um, caring, accountability, positivity, and proactivity. And so when the owner of the company saw on my resume, hashtag positive peg, he was like, you're one of the core values. You're totally hired. Wow. So, you know, that's handy. hashtags. 
Well, apparently yeah, positive so pegs, plural, is a thing. Oh, yeah. Where people like leave little notes with the um, the laundry clips. So, but yours is much cooler. Thank you. That theirs is kind of dorky. <laughs> You're cool. They're jerks. Yeah. Wait, what did that say? Lip balm. I had to leave a positive peg at NSWRFS along with 882 lip balms, a Joey pouch, rubbish bags, hair ties, and a bunch of positive love to the awesome staff there. That must be Australian. Yeah. Yeah. What? Joey, what, what, Joey what pouch sounds so much cooler than Fanny Pack. Yes. Joey pouch. I, I, I looked up positive peg on Google to see if. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Gotcha. So the number one Google listing for your name yeah. is a misspelling that somebody <laughs> <laughs> forgot to pluralize it. Oh, so my gosh. You need to talk to somebody in marketing and advertise. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> yes. I Other people have already taken positive peg by the time I got that, so that's not me. But all right, yeah, I'm gonna go you after put, like, her. The real underscore positive <laughs> peg, <laughs> blue check. <laughs> that's okay, you do that. You just that's named you my Instagram. That. I think there you go. Oh, my new Instagram. I like it. All right. Okay. Well, the real positive peg <laughs> is gonna do her homework. I will let you know what I find on homeless people from Watterson High School. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Okay, and one more question before we let you go. Oh, please. <clears throat> Besides you and Rick, who else do you think we should pull into this menagerie and get on the air? Well, you said Rachel and Dan, and I think that you should have them both on at the same time. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> we would never get a word in edgewise. I know, well, they would take over. Rick? Yep. But, um... You know, I think those are great. Uh, those, you know, Rachel and Dan would be great. Um, gosh, who else? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Fran? Francesca? Ah. Our good Fran? Francesca mm -hmm. Bonus? Rayburn? Uh, you gotta love Fran. She's awesome. Right. She's pretty witty, too. She's very witty. Yeah, very, yeah. Very witty. Um... Yeah, I'll think. I'll think more on that. That's the part two of my homework. Damn, look yeah. at you! I'll get, I'll get your whole list. Best yep. manager yep. ever. <laughs> <laughs> and then co coordinate their availabilities. For yeah. <laughs> We're probably looking at the third or fourth Saturday in July, where we'll okay. Reconvene. Um Well, like who? Who do you want to talk to? I mean, who? We don't what know. are the criteria? Just. Kind of, I mean, I was thinking, keep it around people that hung out at Bums at least a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And something I thought of today, Tom, um, do you remember that picture that Troy took, like, in 1992, where there were a yeah. bunch of us on the stoop? Yes. Wouldn't it be cool to get, mm -hmm. like, everybody in that picture on here at some point and talk to all of them again? That. It would be fantastic. That's a great idea. Yeah. If I can remember, I'll post a picture up on the um, the official Facebook page of the show also. Which we have a Facebook page? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Marketing. <laughs> Love it. Why would people pay for marketing and advertising? I don't understand it. How do you make a living, Peggy? <laughs> Just put some flyers up. <laughs> flyers. That's what I've been doing. I go down to campus every Saturday and staple them up everywhere. You got the big stapler? I got yeah. one. So, A, so cool. it's summertime on campus. And, B, it's campus during a pandemic. So, all 500 of my little posters are probably yet to be seen by a human. Except for mm -hmm. naked homeless dudes. Like, I like podcasts. I'll check this out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that one person okay, in so Romania that listens... Oh my gosh. So am I allowed to expand it a little bit though? Because I think there are people who are kind of uh, fascinated with what we had in high school a little bit and they weren't willing to admit it back then, but they admit it now at reunions. So can I tap really? into some of those people too? Hmm, how desperate are they to get on? Right. I don't know. I mean, with good marketing, 
we could probably make it. Like, <laughs> right. I'm writing. I write down Fran. I'm going to write down marketing. <laughs> I was, I'm I just was, kidding. I was writing things down, but I lost my pen. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're open. I mean, hell, we went four shows with just he and I, so, you know, we yeah. can bring other people in. I'm down with that. Cool. Ash is already bored with me. <laughs> no! No, but, okay, and you can edit this part out if you want, but one no, of the I fun can't. things... I, I have no idea how. You said you could edit. No, I said I can put music <laughs> on the front and back. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to say this. I think when I was listening, you know, what I wanted to hear more of was like what I asked Tom at the beginning. Like, well, where have you been? Right? Mm. What have you been doing? <coughs> that could be a whole show. You guys could tell us where you've been and what you've been doing. Hmm. Just stuff. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then just the normal and then do the articles because they're awesome. I love the articles. The articles are the bomb out. diggity. <laughs> they're the bomb diggity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop talking now because since you can't edit anything out. You're right. <laughs> right? You don't want to say anything that would elicit a bomb diggity response. <laughs> Actually, I think I can record over it and just go like. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> just what I was hoping. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. As we exit okay. here, um, the people on the outside world will hear the AVs wrapping up Where'd My Beer Go? And as usual, we will hear dead silence because we're awful people and don't deserve to hear the AVs. So uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in, the dozen or dozens of you. Um, we, we like you like a distant cousin and hope you join us for yeah. episode seven. Come back for more. <laughs> and thanks and, and thanks again to Peggy for Absolutely. hanging out with us. Absolutely. Thank you both. June's best co co host <laughs> ever. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, good night, everyone. Thank you.